to know something about your enemy and who it is you're fighting against. In the spiritual realm, it could never be more true. Many Christians do not take our enemy seriously because they don't know enough about him to take him seriously. Satan's incognitos are very clever. He hides in the most unbelievable places. He hides in religion, one of his favorite hideouts. He hides behind intellectualism. He hides in poetry and art, oftentimes in music. He hides in psychology and human understanding. In fact, the Bible says that the whole world lies in the lap of the evil one. You've got to know who the real enemy is. You know, the bad news is that we have an enemy. The good news is he is already defeated. Jesus defeated him on the cross for us. So he is a defeated enemy. But the Bible makes it very clear that Satan comes to do three things, right? To steal, kill, and destroy. And so we have to not really defeat the enemy. We have to enforce his defeat in our lives. We have to remind him and remind ourselves that he actually has no right in our lives. He has no power in our lives. And so uh, tonight I just want to equip you with a word so that you will know how to recognize him because he does it come in in subtle ways. They want to know how they operate. What are their weaknesses? What are their strengths? What kind of schemes and strategies do they use? And, and so it's interesting because many times in the body of Christ, believers don't really know who their real enemy is. Or should I say this, they're fighting the wrong enemy. And, and maybe they don't know who, uh, how the enemy operates. You know, you can't blame everything on the devil. We're to know the enemy. He's called the God of this age, the Prince of this world, and the Prince of the air. In 2 Corinthians 2.11, we're told not to be ignorant of the devil, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. There is a devil, and there are a spiritual host. In Matthew 25.41, it speaks of his angels. There are demons. In 1 Peter 5, 8, the Bible says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. And then in Ephesians, the 6th chapter and the 12th verse, we read these words, talking about you and me. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Much of the New Testament has to do with spiritual warfare. And no one is exempt from this conflict. He doesn't want you to be the first one in your family not to need drink to feel good about yourself. He doesn't want you to be the first one in your family to be able to stay stable in a relationship rather than running around. So what does he want? He wants to, he wants to stand guard in the area and this is a brilliant strategy. I got to give it to these devils. The devils are smarter than a lot of church people. They know how to get in formation. They know how to accomplish a purpose and they know how to discern what is valuable. Mark it down, men and women. Satan is not the man below heaping coals onto an eternal furnace. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. I don't know what you get from the word against, but let me tell you what it means. It means we're in a battle. And there is someone we are against, and someone who is against us. And that seems rather strange to most people today, especially those who have adopted a rather passive attitude about the Christian life. Sometimes we're involved in things. Sometimes it's just life. But you got to know when it's the enemy. You have to understand that. And you don't want to waste your time and your energy fighting people and circumstances that don't belong to you. Let God fight those battles for you. Amen. God will vindicate you. He will turn things around. But you have to target the real enemy. Say target the real enemy. And so when you identify the real enemy, you are able to walk in victory. 
We are fighting against the enemy of our souls, the devil and his strategies. And here are some things we need to know about him if we're gonna have any chance to be victorious in this battle. If I had to choose one word to describe Satan, ruthless would be the word. There's nothing Satan will not do to achieve his goal of disrupting and destroying your faith, your joy, and even your well-being. He is an enemy who is to be taken very seriously. You and I are no match for Satan in our own strength, but in the strength of Christ, we can be victorious. And to help you begin your relationship with Christ, the word against stands out five times in Ephesians chapter 6. We are told that it's not against flesh and blood, but against four things. Principalities, powers, world rulers, spiritual host. Now some of the names that are given to Satan and the devil and the tempter in the Bible are, of course, Satan, the deceiver, a liar, a murderer, an accuser, the prince and power there, the prince of this world, the god of this age, the destroyer, the evil one, Beelzebub, all of those names are given to a person that we call Satan. Now the Bible speaks of his wiles, his devices, his snares. The Bible warns that he beguiled, he seduces, he opposes, he resists, he deceives, he sows tasks, he tempts, he persecutes, he blasphemes. Many people ask, where did the devil come from? According to Isaiah 14, he apparently revolted against God. He was the greatest and the most beautiful of all of God's created creatures. And for some unknown mysterious reason, way back in the eons of time, he led a revolt against God. And yes, he knows how to hit you where it hurts the most. And that's why he'll use people to get to your relationship with God. What's really most valuable is your relationship with God, but he knows if he can get people to offend you, you will do what the people did. You will send Jesus away because you were offended by people. He knows where to hit you. He knows where your insecurity is. He knows your playlist. What you say to yourself about yourself. He knows your proclivities, your perversions. He knows what makes you feel ashamed. So he hits you there to make you lash out in anger. The enemy will use anything to get to your faith. What he's after is your relationship with God. But he will use the pigs to get you to push away the presence of God. He knows exactly where you're vulnerable. Guess where you're the most vulnerable? Wherever you place the greatest value. Don't fight the wrong enemy. Don't fight people. Don't get all engaged in gossip and strive and division and trying to make, you know, make sure you're right. No, leave those things to God and spend your time in prayer resisting the enemy where it really counts. Amen. You know, and I was praying and I was sincere, but one God, one day God spoke to me just in my spirit and he said, Lisa, quit trying to figure things out in your mind and realize that you have an enemy and he's trying to literally destroy your life. And when he said that to me, it woke me up spiritually and it became revelation to me. And I realized that day as a young adult that God not only had a plan for my life, but Satan had a plan for my life. And his plan was for me to stay down and to steal from me and to destroy me in that moment. You see, I had been fighting the wrong battle. I was fighting the battle through reasoning, but I had to learn to just rise up and exercise my authority that I had in the Lord Jesus Christ.